This is going to be a real quick video. We're going to look at two things. We're going to look at what production functions are, specifically what a Cobb Douglas production function is, and we're going to look at how we can use some basic econometrics in Excel to calculate uh, some values for a Cobb Douglas production function that come from the real world data. What is a production function? Let's start with that question. A production function shows us the relationship between outputs and inputs. So uh, in this equation right here, Qx is our output. It's whatever we're being, whatever's being produced, and it's going to be produced by capital. It's going to be produced by labor. You could put a bunch of other stuff in there as well. Uh, for the purpose of this exposition, we're just going to have a very simple production function. Capital, which is going to be K, and labor, which is going to be L. A very common assumption of this F, uh, of k of l function is that it's going to be Cobb Douglas in nature. Now, Cobb Douglas in nature is referring to uh, a paper written in 1928, I believe, uh, looking at production functions written by Cobb and Douglas, obviously. And the production function takes a particular form of q sub x equals a times k to the alpha times l to the beta power. What are all these letters doing here? Um, a is going to be total factor of productivity. That's a measure of productivity, of technology, stuff like that. K and L are going to be some measures of capital and labor. Might be the number of workers, uh, K would be L. K might be the value of capital, something like that. And then alpha and beta are going to be the output elasticities of capital and labor. Intuitively, what alpha and beta are all about is telling us how productive capital and labor are respectively. So higher values of alpha tell us that capital is relatively more productive. Higher levels of beta tell us, tells us that labor is relatively more productive. Uh, we can also say something about returns to scale from alpha and beta. Uh, essentially, if a, alpha plus beta add up to 1, we're talking about a, a production process with constant returns to scale. Uh, if alpha plus beta is less than 1, we've got decreasing returns. And if they add up to more than 1, then we're dealing with increasing returns. We're going to use some basic econometrics to try to calculate the values of a, alpha, and beta that come out of our Cobb-Douglas production function. Now, how are we going to do this? Linear regression should be a linear model, and this Cobb-Douglas production function is clearly not a linear model. So what we need to do is we need to take our Cobb-Douglas production function, do a logarithmic transformation, which turns it into a straight line, and then we can do linear regression modeling on it. So what does this logarithmic transformation entail? Well, we're going to take the natural logs of both sides of the equation. That's going to give us an equation that looks like the natural log of q is equal to the natural log of a plus alpha times the natural log of k plus beta times the natural log of l. And now we have a very direct relationship between the regression coefficients that get estimated and the Cobb-Douglas model that we're starting with. Uh, it's easiest to start with beta 1 and beta 2 from the regression model. Those two clearly map straight into alpha and beta from the Cobb-Douglas production function. The only one that's a little bit tricky is that our regression model gives us our constant term alpha, and that's not going to be A from the Cobb-Douglas model. It's going to be the natural log of A from the Cobb-Douglas model. So we're going to need to do a little bit of math once we estimate it, but it's not going to be that big a deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn our attention to some actual data. This is, in fact, the data from the original Cobb-Douglas paper that gave rise to the production function we're talking about. It came from 1928. We have data that ranges between 1899 and 1922. We have data on capital stock. That's where our K is going to come from. We have data on our number of workers. That's where L is going to come from. And we have some manufacturing index, that's the amount of output, so that's going to be where our QX comes from. What are we going to do? First thing we have to do is take our data and calculate some natural logs of everything so that we can run a linear regression. So we have the natural log of capital, we need the natural log of labor, and we need the natural log of output. Now to calculate these guys equals the ln of 
capital stock. So the natural log of 100 is uh, 4.605, etc. Uh, from here, we can just drag and don't click and we have populated our entire field. So we have natural logs of all the numbers between 1899 and 1922. Next step is to actually run a regression. How do we do that? Well, we need to use the data analysis tool pack. If you go to the data tab of Excel and you don't see it, then you need to install it. It's already on your computer. You just need to activate it and you do that by going to file and add-ins. Uh, got another video that shows you how to do that, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we go to data analysis, we choose regression. We need to choose our Y range, that's our dependent variable. That's the thing on the left side of our regression. The thing on the left side of our regression is gonna be the natural log of output. So we're gonna choose that whole column, making sure we include the labels at the top as well. It's just gonna make the regression output easier to interpret. For our X range, uh, F and G, that's correct, lovely. Uh, make sure we've got labels ticked. We don't care about any of those. We're gonna just chuck it right here to make our lives easy. Uh, and if you want to do some advanced econometric residual plotting and so forth, go ahead and tick all these boxes. You can look at that if you want. From here, we just hit OK, and boom, we've got a regression model. And this is a linear regression, like hopefully you've seen one or two in your life. We could start interpreting this by looking at the R squared, which is a big number, the significance of F, which tells us uh, in this case that our regression is very significant. But what we're gonna be focused on for the purposes of turning what we see in front of us back into the Cobb-Douglas production function, we're gonna focus on these three coefficients right here. So now that we've run our regression using Excel, let's take what we've done in Excel and transform it back into the Cobb-Douglas production function. Here I've taken the Excel output and put it into the, the slide in front of you. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to transform our intercept term, that negative 0.177, into A, the A from the original Cobb-Douglas production function. How do we do that? we raise e to the power of negative 0.177, and that gives us a value of 0.838. So a is going to be 0.838. Now we can take all three of the pieces, the 0.838 and the two coefficients, the 0.233 and the 0.807, and we can put those back into the Cobb-Douglas production function. The Cobb-Douglas production function, as you recall, was qx is equal to a times k to the alpha power times l to the beta power. Those coefficients are going to slide right into those terms for a, alpha, and beta. And our final production function looks like this. qx is equal to 0 0.838 times k to the 0.233 times l to the 0.807. Hope this helps.